Hi, and welcome to another episode of General Nerdery. Today I'm going to show you how to rip a DVD. That means taking a DVD disc that you can play in a DVD player and making a video file that you can play in your computer. So let's take it for a spin. We're going to be using another free and open source program today. This time it's Handbrake. Yes, just like that thing between the front seats of your car. To get Handbrake, open up your browser and navigate to handbrake.fr. Once there, click the download link. From here you can download the appropriate version of Handbrake for your operating system. Handbrake is available for Windows, Linux, and even Mac. After you've downloaded and installed Handbrake, insert the DVD that you want to rip first. That done, open up Handbrake. The first step for us to do after you've opened up the program is to tell Handbrake what source you want to rip from. Go up here to the Source tab and select your DVD from the drop-down list. Now before we go any further, let me just state flat out. Handbrake will not break copy protection. This means that you can't use Handbrake, at least not all on its own, to copy video DVDs that you've purchased. You can thank the MPAA and the D Digital Millennium Copyright Act for saying that you don't actually own the DVDs that you've purchased. This isn't to say that there aren't ways to do that, but I'm not getting into that. <clears throat> Moving on. When we do this, Handbrake is going to scan the DVD and determine how many video tracks it has on it and their length. Now in this case, this is a very short disc that I made just for, just for sample purposes. It only has three very short tracks on it. Now you'll notice that Handbrake automatically selected the longest track. Uh, as frequently, if you're only going to rip one track off of a disc, you would want to select the longest one. However, you can pick any track that you want. We're going to start with the first track. Just like with Freemake Video Converter, which I covered in a previous tutorial, Handbrake has presets for specific kinds of video output. For example, if we knew we wanted to make a video for an Android phone, we could simply select the Android preset, and it would create a compatible file for an Android device. We're going to get a little bit more advanced than that, but not too much. Our goal is to create as high a quality video file as we can, preferably indistinguishable in quality from the original disk, without wasting hard drive space unnecessarily. The first thing we're going to do with our first project here is select high profile from the presets. This will give us a starting point. Next, come over to cropping and select custom. If these settings are not already all zeroed out, zero them out now. Now move over to the anamorphic setting and select Strict. After that's done, click the Video Filters tab. Under Detelicene, select Default, Decomb should already be set to Default, Deinterlace Off, Denoise Off, Deblock Off. Now click the Video tab, make sure that Constant Quality is set, and drag the slider down to 14. Move on to Audio, now from the audio tab, we determine which audio track or tracks from the original disc we want to copy onto our new output video file. Now in this case, this being a sample DVD that I created, there is only one audio track for each video file. But let's say, for example, that I had an English track and a French track. They would both show up here and I could select which one I wanted in my output video. The other decision I have to make is do I want to convert the audio into a slightly more compatible format at a slight loss of quality, or copy the original audio exactly as it was onto the new video file. Personally, I like to copy the original audio exactly as it is. That's your call. You can give that a shot, and if you have trouble playing the video back on the device that you're trying to use, then you can go back and change it. So in this case, I'm going to delete the converted audio and leave the pass-through audio in place. The Subtitle tab, of course, only applies if you are trying to copy subtitles from your original disc onto the new video file. Now, this video doesn't have any subtitles. If it did, they would appear here. I could select which subtitle track I wanted and click Add. Uh, if you want the subtitles to appear by default when you play back on a, a, any given device, you would select the subtitle track that you want to be the default and click the Default tab here. And then let's say I stuck that video into a boxy box, I would play it back and the subtitles would pop up automatically. I would not have to go to a subtitle menu and turn them on. So now you're probably thinking, wow, we just went through a whole lot of options and I'm going to have to remember to do this every single time that I want to rip something off of a disc. And no, you aren't. Because what we're going to do now is save our own preset. All you have to do now that we've set our options the way we want them, 
is click Add. Now we name our preset. I've actually done this for myself already, but I'm going to do it again. I'll, you can name it whatever you want. I like DVD Archive. I'm going to put a 2 here just because I already have one of these. Uh, use Picture Size. You want to set to Source Maximum. And just leave Save Filter Settings checked. Click Add. Now we have a new preset. That's all those settings that we just did. I can even click it right now because it's not going to change anything. It's everything that we already set it to. Um, after that's done, we're going to go up here and tell the program where we want to save our video file and, and what as. We're already on the desktop. I'm just going to name this uh, Sample 1. Save. Now, clicking Save does not actually output the video file. You notice there's no, nothing new that appeared here. That just tells the program to save the path, save where we want to create the video file. At this point, I could just click Start, and it would output the video that we selected under all the settings that we just picked. However, let's say that we want to not just do this file, but do all the videos that are on this disk. Well, what we do is instead of clicking Start, click Add to Queue. And now it opens up the encode queue, and it puts the one video on here, so it's ready to go. And now what we're going to do is select the next video on our disk. Make sure we still have our preset selected, so everything will be set up exactly the way we did it on the previous go-around. We're going to click Browse. Going to name this one Sample 2. Save. Add to queue. See? There we go. And now we'll go here, Title 3, DVD Archive, Browse, Sample 3, Save, Add to Queue. So now we've got all these ready to go, right here on our queue. Now we click Encode, and it begins converting the videos in our queue. Conversion times can vary wildly depending on the length of the videos, what kind of content it is, your quality settings, and also uh, the speed of your computer, of course. Uh, this is actually running a bit slower than it normally does for me because I'm doing a screen recording at the same time. I'm just going to skip ahead to the end. Okay, so we're all done. It says job status completed, completed, completed. Here's the videos that we just created. I can close handbrake now. If I go up here, I can uh, click one of these and open it up. This is actually some uh, raw footage from a commercial that I shot uh, a little ways back. But as you can see, this is playing off of the computer, not off of the DVD. The quality's quite good. And that's it. That's how to rip a DVD with Handbrake. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you find it useful. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on General Nerdery.